welcome to Shindig. Today, we're going to show you how to create an event with the Shindig Event Manager. You should have received your credentials to enter the Event Manager by email. Once you're in the Shindig Event Manager account, click on the Create Event button. Note that if you want to create a whole conference with dozens of related events, panels, sessions, exhibit booths, receptions, or breakouts, or if you want to set up a reoccurring event, then you would need to click on the Create Series button instead. But for now, let's proceed with just an event. Fill out the event title and subtitle. Next, create a custom URL for the event. Make sure to use all lowercase letters and leave no spaces, and then set up the date and start time for the event. Choose how long you would like the event to run for. Here, you can indicate the number of expected attendees. If more than this number enter the event, the overflow audience will either be turned away with the indication that the event is full, or they could receive a live stream of the event. If you want them to see a live stream, you must click Go Live to Shindig from the Recording tab in the Admin Dashboard at the beginning of the event. If your event is ticketed, choose Yes and enter the ticket price where indicated. You can add up to four admins for each event. To add a new admin, click on the Add Admin button and enter the admin's email address. If you want, you can use generic admin emails like admin1 at mycompany.com which allows you to designate that login credential on the fly to whomever you choose. Remember, however, you can only have one individual logged in under any one credential at a time. If you would like to restrict access to your event, you can do so by requiring either a Facebook or a LinkedIn login. That indicates that you want everyone to enter the event with the credentials from those platforms. In doing so, the links to their individual profile pages will also be visible to others in the event. This also ensures the likelihood that people enter under their real identities. Alternatively, you can restrict the event by setting up a promo code, which allows a certain porous level of security where people in the know can share the promo code, but the event won't be generally available to the public. Finally, you can create a guest list so as to complement any other restriction. Those on the guest list can sail on through a ticketed event and can enter without a promo code, without their social media login, and even if the event is over capacity. Alternatively, a guest list only event will provide the maximum level of security. You'll see where to upload your guest list in a moment. To collect additional attendee information, click the Add Field button and type in what kind of information you'd like to collect. You can choose whether these inputs are required or optional, and whether they are reflected as a name tag on each attendee's video in the event, or only available to the host. This metadata will also be available to you on the Attendance Statistics dashboard, along with attendee name, email, time of entry and departure, and other actions taken by the attendee. Finally, here's where you add the guest list. Simply upload a CSV file here, and make sure to title your columns of the spreadsheet as email, first, last, as such, before importing it as a CSV. Now click Next to move to the second page. Here is where you build your splash page. Upload a custom banner here, and note that the file must be a JPEG, and have the dimensions of 950 pixels by 250 pixels. Next, you can upload your logo. This file must also be a JPEG and have a resolution of 400 by 400 pixels. Finally, there's a custom text field that allows you to insert text, hyperlinks, and embed media. Once you're done, click Next to move to the third and final page. This section is where you set up your confirmation emails to guests and RSVP lists. Click on this link to open the edit window and edit your confirmation as you please. The next section sets up reminder emails for your guest and RSVP lists. Click on this link to open the edit window and edit your reminder email as you please. Both these emails can also include other marketing information, links, and graphics. Indicate how long in advance of an event start time 
you would like to send a reminder email to your lists. You can add multiple reminders and they are fully customizable. Here's where you upload a background image for your event. You can upload any JPEG image with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. We recommend that the image be a physical space that mimics where the in-person gathering might have otherwise taken place. We also encourage you to desaturate the image and decrease its contrast so it does not compete with the live video feeds of the participants and principal speakers. Next, we have custom hot button widgets that allow you to bring in calls to action, e-commerce, downloads, or other applications into the event. The buttons themselves can either be text fields or custom JPEG images. Make sure your custom images are two megabytes or smaller. Once you've chosen your image or entered the text you would like displayed on the button, enter a corresponding URL to which you would like to link that image or button. To add another widget, click add another and repeat the process. Additional assets for your event can be added here. Make sure you preload your video, audio, and presentation assets before the event starts. These files will appear in the Select Files section of the Broadcast Pods in your event for easy access. Please note that video must be in an MP4 format, audio in an MP3 format, and presentations or documents must be in PDF format. Once you're in the admin panel for your event, you can also add and save iframe HTML embed codes for YouTube videos, Google Slides, presentations, and more. During your event, only a portion of the audience will be viewable on screen at any one time. This setting allows you to determine the size of the visible audience on screen. A higher number of participants on screen will cause the images of participants to become smaller, while a fewer number causes each participant's image to become larger. If you want your participants to be able to mingle and socialize, you may want to choose the largest number so they are able to see more fellow attendees per participants tab. To the right, there's an option to monitor public chats as an admin. We recommend leaving this engaged. Finally, there are four boxes on your left. If you would like your event to appear on an upcoming events list and on our mobile app, leave these first two boxes checked. If you're creating a demo or an event you would not like to publicize, please uncheck Show on Mobile App and Show on Shindig Upcoming Page. The third box, when checked, creates a welcome slide from the content you uploaded for your splash page. To display this slide on your event, open the Select File tab in your broadcast pod and click Broadcast Here. Finally, the last box allows for selection of the default privacy setting. It is recommended that the default is left off so to encourage mingling, networking, and conversations among participants. While default is off, anyone who wants privacy merely clicks on the lock in the Participants tab to turn it on. Congratulations, you've created your first Shindig event. Now as you can see, your event shows up on your account on the Upcoming Events tab. If you click on your event, a drop-down appears. To find your splash page, click on Enter. To find your admin login, click on Admin Access. To see statistics on RSVPs, pre-event, and other attendee information post-event, and to retrieve and download your recording, click on Statistics. Here is an example of the Statistics tab and the different views of event data it displays. That's it.